You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. 13 years after 26-11 Mumbai attacks, Pakistan fails to show sincerity in delivering justice. Indian security forces continue elimination of Pakistan-backed terrorists. And Afghans struggle to survive amid terrorism and humanitarian crisis. It's been 13 years since the horrendous terror attacks on Mumbai were carried out on 26 November 2008 by Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists. Ten gunmen sneaked into India's financial capital and carried out attacks at different locations. It claimed the lives of 166 innocent people. As India marks the 13th anniversary of this heinous attack, the real perpetrators and masterminds of the attacks are still at large in Pakistan. A report. Twenty-six November 2008. India was caught unawares when 10 heavily armed Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists spread bullets, making Mumbai bleed. The bloodshed continued for three days, leaving 166 people dead and hundreds of others injured. The scars of the ghastly Mumbai terror attack are still unforgettable. As India commemorates the 13th anniversary of this barbaric attack, the perpetrators and masterminds of the attacks still roam free in Pakistan. What we need to understand is these terrorists are effectively one more division, uh, say the infantry corps of the Pakistan army. Okay. Uh, and this is not me saying it, this is their own former defense minister under Benazir Bhutto saying this, uh, at no extra cost to the taxpayer. That's the way they see it. So obviously they're being allowed to roam free out there because uh, honestly, would anyone arrest a Pakistan army general? Uh, or a colonel or a major in Pakistan, of course not. They'd be petrified to do so. And that's why these people will never be arrested because they are instruments of the Pakistani state. They are state actors pretending to be non-state actors and they will uh, essentially uh, never be arrested. No action will be taken because terror was is and will continue to remain. In fact, the worse Pakistan, uh, Pakistan's economic situation uh, grows, uh, they will become an even more important, terror will become an even more important element of Pakistan's uh, foreign policy. It was on 23 November 2008, when 10 Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists trained under the supervision of Pakistan establishment left Pakistan's port city of Karachi and entered India three days later on November 26. Armed with automatic weapons and hand grenades, the attackers landed on Indian soil, split into the groups of three and headed to their chosen targets, unleashing what came to be known as the Mumbai terror attacks. Though the attacks were carried out in practice by 10 LET terrorists, the mastermind was sitting in Pakistan, giving them instructions on how to cause maximum damage to India. <laughs> Hafiz Muhammad Said, a UN proscribed global terrorist and supreme commander of Lashkar e Taiba, was the mastermind of 2008 Mumbai massacre. He is on India's most wanted list and has been declared a global terrorist by the US and UN after 2008 attacks. For years, India has been demanding Pakistan to hand over Hafiz Saeed to New Delhi. However, in order to keep him safe in the country, Pakistan keeps taking pseudo actions against Saeed and has sentenced him several times in terror financing cases 
by its so-called anti-terrorism court. Though such steps are evidently nothing but absurd exercises conducted by Pakistan to fool the Financial Action Task Force, which has retained the deep state on its grey list since 2018. Pakistani jails uh, have two sections. Uh, one is an actual jail for people that they don't like. And the second is, you know, say the Lahore Hilton or the Karachi Hilton, uh, where you go for a spa retreat, uh, a, a few weeks, a few months or a few years of uh, perpetual spying and relaxation and entertainment. Uh, and they would like you to believe that this is a jail. But this has always been their state policy towards terror. Because, uh, you know, uh, Pakistan is the biggest emporium of terror there is. So obviously they provide spa services for their terrorists. Hafi Saeed has already been convicted for 21 years imprisonment in four terror financing cases of late. The January 2021 verdict takes the count to 36 years. However, as per several sources, despite being sentenced in terror financing cases, Pakistan has quietly shifted Hafiz to his house in Lahore from Court Lakhpat Jail, where he continues to run Lashkar-e Taiba. Like Saeed, a senior leader of Lashkar-e Taiba and the foremost ring leader of the attack, Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, was arrested in 2008 but released on bail by Pakistan court, citing lack of evidence. And since then, he has been enjoying VIP treatment from Pakistan's establishment. In these gruesome attacks, Nine terrorists were killed and the lone survivor, Ajmal Amir Kasab, was caught and was sentenced to death in 2012. However, real perpetrators and facilitators belonging to Pakistan's military and spy agency have still not been brought to justice. Let's move to India, Jammu and Kashmir, where the security forces have launched a series of counter-terrorism operations to demolish the cobweb of Pakistan-aided terrorism in the region. Let's remind you that the Kashmir Valley witnessed a series of attacks on civilians by these terrorists in recent days. In the operation by security forces, many top commanders of terror outfits were eliminated. We have a report. There have been continuous attempts by neighbouring Pakistan and its proxies to disrupt peace in the Kashmir Valley. Not only the Pakistan Army is carrying out ceasefire violations at the line of control, but it is also helping the terrorists to infiltrate into the Kashmir Valley. The aim is to create fear psychosis and disturbance in the region. Unfortunately, the malicious attempts by Pakistan gets a setback by alert Indian security forces who time and again keep foiling infiltration bids and eliminating terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. The Indian Army, the Central Reserve Police Force and Jammu and Kashmir Police are jointly carrying out counter-terrorism operations in the Kashmir Valley. In a recent shootout in Srinagar city, security forces killed three terrorists belonging to the resistance front. Its top commander, Mehran Yasin, was also among those killed in the operation. Mehran was involved in the killing of two teachers and another civilian in the city. What Mehran has been doing ever since he became active, he was earlier working as associate with Abbas Sheikh, and he's the one who was providing all kind of logistic support to Abbas when he was active in Srinagar city and elsewhere. He is responsible along with his associates for the killing of uh, our sub-inspector Arshad. He is responsible for a grenade attack on 26th of June 2021 at Barbarsha in which one innocent civilian was killed and three of them were injured. Narco-terrorism is also emerging as a big challenge for the security agencies in Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan has been using narcotics as a major financing tool to sponsor terrorism in the region. The Jammu and Kashmir police arrested one person and seized 52 kilograms of heroin worth Rs 100 crore or 13.4 million US dollar during a routine check in Jammu district. 
कुल मिलाकर के जो नारकोट्स का ट्रांसपोर्टेशन है स्मगलिंग है पाकिस्तान की तरफ से वो पूरे साल के अंदर बड़ी स्केल पे हुआ कुछ इंसिडेंट ऐसे भी सामने आए जहां ड्रोन्स का इस्तेमाल किया गया नारकोटिक्स को स्मगल करने के लिए पाकिस्तान की तरफ से इस तरफ ट्रांसपोर्ट करने के लिए तफ्तीश के दौरान काफ़ी बड़े इंटरस्टेट कनेक्शंस ड्रग माफिया के सामने आए जिसके ऊपर जम्मू पुलिस ने कश्मीर पुलिस ने मिलकर के बहुत अच्छा काम किया हमारी कोशिश है कि नारकोटिक्स का जो सिलसिला पाकिस्तान की तरफ से जहां और पंजाब में चलता है और फिर नारको टैरर के नेटवर्क को चलाने की जो कोशिशें होती हैं कि नारकोटिक्स का सेल हो उनकी सेल से जो पैसा अवेलेबल हो उसको मिल्टनसी में फिर से पंप इन किया जाए पीस एंड डेवलपमेंट इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर डज नॉट सूट पाकिस्तान एट ऑल Despite international condemnation, Islamabad continues to send its proxies to infiltrate into the Kashmir Valley and create fear among the people. Also, recruitment of local Kashmiri youth to spread Pakistan's terror agenda remains a significant issue as terror recruitment in the valley has not seen complete reduction as compared to previous years. They are desperately trying to create an atmosphere of fear and terror among people that would hinder the economy and progress in the Union territory. Let's move to Afghanistan where the security situation has deteriorated after the establishment of the so-called Islamic Emirate by the Taliban. Several terror incidents in the country have caused a large number of deaths and injuries. people struck between the ideological conflict of two brutal forces taliban and isis are now facing a huge economic crisis our report people in afghanistan are living in a grave situation in the 3 months since the taliban took control of the country the islamic state has stepped up attacks across the country The suicide attack outside of Kabul airport, suicide attacks on Shia mosque in Kunduz and Kandhar, and the attack on Sardar Muhammad Daud Hospital in Kabul were some of the major security incidents. These attacks have raised alarm bells in the West about the potential resurgence of a group that could eventually pose an international threat. Once limited to a few provinces and Kabul ISILKP now seems to be present in nearly all provinces and increasingly active the number of attacks has increased significantly from last year to this year in 2021 60 so far this year 334 attacks attributed to ISKP or in fact claimed by ISKP ISKP continues to target the Shiite communities the Taliban insists that they are waging a concerted campaign against ISILKP but this campaign is worrying in that it appears to rely heavily on extrajudicial detentions and killings of suspected ISILKP members This is an area deserving of more attention from the international community. The brutal terror attacks by ISIS are not the only challenge people are facing in the war-torn country. Everyday worries about food and rent are adding to the misery of regular Afghans as the economy gets crushed. A countless number of people have lost their jobs and even more haven't received their salaries in kabul hundreds of offices and businesses have shuttered while unemployment is a problem across afghanistan it used to be that women could work and contribute to the family income the fact that so many women now stay at home has only exacerbated the nation's financial woes 
صد روز به این خاطر به ما مشکل گذشت که ما ماش نداشتیم و دیگه ای که امنیت درست نبود هنوز هم انتحاری میشه ما به تشویش هستیم دیگه اولادای ما هنوز هم دخترها به مکتب نمیرن درس, ن... درس نیست The two decades of war in Afghanistan have taken a heavy toll on Afghan children with extreme poverty and hunger pushing more children into child labor to support their families. Around 20% of children in the country are engaged in child labor, working all sorts of jobs such as street vendors, shoe polishers, car washers and garbage collectors. There is no childhood in Afghanistan now. It is all about surviving and getting through the next day. Common Afghans are paying heavily for both Afghanistan's conflict and its abrupt end in Taliban victory. To abandon the Afghan people now would be a historic mistake. Urgent steps must be taken to address the looming humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan and stave off economic collapse. Let's move to Pakistan, where the establishment thinks that the innocent Baloch students are bigger threats to the Islamic Republic of Pakistan than the globally designated terrorists like Hafiz Saeed and Maulana Masood Azhar. Pakistani military and intelligence agencies are abducting and killing Baloch civilians, particularly youngsters and college-going students. The silence of international organizations against the day-to-day -day enforced disappearances of these peace-loving students is a question mark. A report. The footage of these Baloch students protesting in freezing temperatures is a slap on the face of those who want to suppress the voice of youngsters in Balochistan. In the cold weather of Quetta, where even sleeping in rooms nearby heater is difficult, these students are protesting in the open sky day and chilly night for their liberation. Protesters are demanding freedom from Pakistani atrocities and forced disappearances and brutal oppression. These protesters are waiting for justice and demanding the safer recovery of their fellows who were abducted by Pakistani forces. Two Baloch students identified as Sohil Ahmed and Farsi Baloch were recently abducted from the university hostel. They both are residents of the Noshki district of Balochistan. आते तालीम हासिल करने के लिए पर यहां पे हम आते अगवा होने के लिए कत्ल होने के लिए हमें इसी यूनिवर्सिटी में इस यूनिवर्सिटी में हमें हमें अपनी इज्जत हमारे इज्जतों पे हमला हुआ है हमारे कौन की इस इस बच्चियों पे हमला हुआ है इस बच्चों पे हमला हुआ है यहां पे आपको पता है कुछ महीने पहले यहां पे पश्तूनख्वा स्टूडेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के एक मेंबर को जाफर खान को इसी यूनिवर्सिटी के हॉस्टल में जहर दिया गया फिर पता चला कि इस जहर किसने दिया उस वक्त भी आपके कैमरे बंद थे पर आपके कैमरे तब चलते हैं जब आप हमारी बहनें अब हमारी बेटियों की इज्जत पर अमल करते हो तब आपके कैमरे काम कर रहे होते हैं Farsi and Sohail Baloch disappeared several days ago following which the students began their protest. As the negotiations with the authority failed, students belonging to various factions of Baloch student organizations locked down the gates of university and declared that they would not allow anyone to take their semester exams. The students paused the demonstration after receiving assurance from the government to recover the missing students. However, the government did not fulfill its promises which forced students to relaunch their protest. Just as you know that Balochistan University or Khuzdar University or Avalan is a small school which is militarized by our academic leaders from middle school to higher education. 
आपको वहाँ पर फौजी छावनी मिलेगी लेकिन ऐसा माहौल नहीं मिलेगा कि आपको लगे कि वो तालीमी इदारा है वहाँ पर आपको बात करने का कर मौका नहीं दिया जाता वहाँ पर आपको हॉस्टलों से लापता किया जाता है अफसोस की बात है इस दौरान ये सब हो रहा है लेकिन हम मेन स्ट्रीम मीडिया पर देखते हैं बलूचिस्तान का मामला वो चाहे मिसिंग पर्सन हो मिसिंग स्टूडेंट्स हो या वो एक्स्ट्रा जुडिशल किलिंग हो There is a long history of disappearances in Balochistan. Thousands of students and professionals have gone missing and are subjected to enforced disappearances by the Pakistan Army in response to the Baloch people's legitimate demand to exercise their right to self-determination. While thousands of Baloch have been kidnapped and disappeared since its illegal occupation, hundreds of others have been eliminated in the line of Pakistan's kill and dump policy. The innocent Balochs need the help of civilized countries who are against oppression, slavery, dictatorship and war crimes. And with that we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nws@anin.com. This is Yeshi signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.